Hi, my name is Steve DeMossi and welcome to Uncharted DIY. Today I'm excited to show you how I finally kept the squirrels off the suet feeder. This project took about two hours and less than $20. And since it went up over a month ago, we haven't had a single squirrel that's been able to get to the feeder. And because it's an umbrella, the birds are able to eat in shelter in wind, rain, and snow. So let me show you how I put this together. We love having the feeder, but the problem we have is that we've got at least five squirrels that hang out in the backyard. And they've figured out how to get on it, and they just eat until they can't eat anymore. Because the baffle is on a ball socket, the squirrels are able to just drop right down on top of it, swivel it out of the way, and land on the cage. They were actually coming down the wire from the tree branch down to the feeder. So what I did was I put an 8 inch metal chimney brush on the wire, but that only slowed them down for a day or two. The other trick that they use is to just drop down from the branch above, bypass that brush altogether, land on the baffle, push it out of the way, and end up on the cage. So we looked at getting a bigger baffle. We found that they were either too small or way too expensive. So one day while I was at Lowe's, I noticed that they had large golf umbrellas that were between five and six dollars. Now I was kind of surprised they even had umbrellas at Lowe's and so was the cashier when I brought it up there. It seemed like a really big umbrella, but after seeing just how acrobatic the squirrels are, this seemed like a great solution. Now the remaining problem is that they come in colors that I don't really want to have hanging from the tree in my backyard. My solution to that was to spray paint the umbrella. I chose a couple different colors from the camouflage line by Krylon, but really any type of paint should probably work just as well. Even though the suet and the suet cage together are not all that heavy, I didn't know if the umbrella would be able to support the weight. So rather than taking a chance of it coming down and either scaring or killing any of the birds, I decided instead to feed the wire rope that I have it currently hung from through the umbrella so that it's still being hung by the loop and the rope and not the umbrella. So right here where I'm pointing my finger is where I'm going to feed that wire down through. So what I did was I used crystal clear Gorilla Tape and by putting that tape on the fabric when I cut a hole through it that should prevent it from running or tearing or fraying. So I took a couple of two inch pieces and I put one on the inside under the ribs and as close as I could get to the center pole of the umbrella. Then I put the corresponding piece on the outside of the umbrella. If you hold it up to the light you can verify that the two pieces of tape are overlapping nicely and you can see exactly where to make your cut. I use an X-Acto knife to cut mine. Once that was cut I just rubbed that tape in as hard as I could to make sure to burnish it to the material. Now since I don't ever intend to collapse the umbrella and carry it around there was no point in keeping the Velcro piece that keeps the umbrella closed, so I cut that off. So here's the first coat with the khaki color paint on it. Now I have to admit it was really weird painting this way. I'm always so careful about painting as smooth and evenly as possible. With this, you want to be blotchy because you want it to look natural. Here it is after I put a coat of the camouflage brown on it. I also decided to use a third color, the olive camouflage, just to add a little bit more depth to my camouflage pattern. As the final part of the paint job, I just used the khaki color one more time as the paint was running out, and the spatter pattern that that created actually works pretty well for the camouflage. In order to prevent the squirrels from being able to just walk to the edge of the umbrella and tilt it down, I decided it would be a good idea to have the handle of the umbrella go through the suet feeder cage. In order to do that, I just took a hacksaw and cut the handle off right below the little button that releases it from its folded position. Then I used a file on the cut end to make sure there were no sharp edges. The diameter of the handle made it so that the handle couldn't just go down through the cage. So I took a pair of wire snips or diagonal cutting pliers and just removed one square worth of wire as you see here. I did this both on the top and on the bottom so that the handle could penetrate all the way through the suet feeder. Here you can see what I did with the wire rope to attach it to the handle of the umbrella. I just tied a loose knot around the top and then another knot right underneath where the ribs of the umbrella meet the handle. 
This way the weight of the suet feeder is still being carried by the wire rope rather than the umbrella. The way I strung my feeder up was I put some little eyelets in the branch of the tree and then ran the wire rope through those eye bolts and down to the feeder. The other end of the wire runs from the branch of the tree to my patio and then down the post of the patio where there's a clasp on the end so I can raise and lower the whole assembly with ease. So after I first put it in position, I noticed that because of the size of the umbrella, it acts like a giant sail and the slightest wind would send the whole thing rocking. My solution to that problem was to take a PVC T fitting, attach it to the tree using a zip tie. And now when I raise the whole assembly back up, the very tip of the umbrella slides into that T fitting and prevents it from moving around much in the wind. And it really helps solidify the whole setup it also helps prevent the squirrels being able to tilt it down with their weight. They tried and tried all different kinds of ways to get past it and couldn't figure it out. So now they've taken to biting the edge. I think what they want to do is try to bite their way through, as you can see here. So I ended up having to put some of the Gorilla Tape along the edges to, to kind of reinforce those edges and prevent the tears and bites from running or fraying. It's kind of worried that the birds might be a little intimidated by the size of this giant thing hanging over the feeder. But within minutes of me hanging it, they were already at the feeder. I didn't even have a chance to step down from the ladder before they were in there. If you try this project, I'd love to see how it comes out for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also check out UnchartedDIY.com where you'll find more details and a list of resources I use to complete this project. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this how-to video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and also check out UnchartedDIY.com, where you'll find further information and more detailed how-to projects.